Romero sends it back to Boatwright. Ball still live. Game winner. Brittany Clayball with the golden goal. History does repeat itself. Nice dribbling from Hicks. Good pass from Mark. Finds Laro. Weaves to her right and makes it a hat trick. Giannis on the near side wing takes a rip. Lands the stick of Dudley. Still going. Claybaugh finds Strauss and quickly. We have our first score. Boatwright tries to clear. Taken away by Brooks. Finds Frankis. Claybaugh the closest defender and is going to be called for the foul. Frankis tries to play quick off the restart. Referees will send it back out with Mackenzie Mitchell to start it up now for the Seagulls in the attacking third. Off the foot of Dudley. Playing it quick. Set it up in the circle. Davis picks it up. Now it's Weinfordner attempting to clear. Instead, a penalty corner given. So Salisbury first in the second half. Now quickly, adjustments for Lynchburg in the second half. He comes down to trying to keep pressure away from Caleb Brady. So far, not the best start at doing that here in the second half, but asking Brady to come up with seven saves in the first half. That is a lot to ask upon an underclassman, right? A sophomore, first year as a starter. That's a lot of weight to put on her shoulders. And Brady's stepped up in some big games throughout the season. But if there's a way that Lynchburg can shift the field of play out of their defensive third, keep it in the middle third, or especially in the attacking third, and try to create some more offense, things will be looking very good for the Hornets. Insert from Denopolis to our player to watch, Mackenzie Mitchell, and then a shot from Salisbury on the far end of the shooting circle, off the left post. It can come quick with the Salisbury offense once they get set. Ultimately, it's a shot coming from Ali Davis after the give from Mackenzie Jamison. And now the Seagulls bring the press forward. Turnover created. Shot, save for Brady. Gets a stick save and clear through the shooting circle. Fantastic hustle from Brady. One, quick on her feet, getting out there, making her body big and deflecting that shot. And then as it's loose on the ground, able to make solid contact with the stick and get it outside the shooting circle. Fantastic play for Brady Her. Now eighth or better save on the afternoon. And officially they're going to say that's her ninth. Again along the back line, Weinford looks to go aerial. Immediately picked up by Salisbury. And this is what we were just talking about. If the Seagulls are able to take advantage and keep the Hornets with their back against the wall, eventually these opportunities are going to turn into a score. And on the other side, Lynchburg has got to try to find a way to get a good clear here. Shift the field to play. Push it off the field and away from Brady and your defense overall. And you're already playing up a, up a score right now. Obviously, if you're able to create some breathing room for your defense with a goal advantage, you're putting yourself in a good position to come on as the winner and advance take on Johns Hopkins on Saturday up in Maryland. And that's the future destiny for whoever wins this match between Lynchburg and Salisbury, taking on Johns Hopkins, who both these teams lost to in the regular season. A step out in front of Allie Davis. It's a good cross from the near sideline. But nothing doing for Salisbury. Strauss will begin the Hornets' possession. Three players in front of her. And it can be tough to break a press once you're pushed so far back in your own defensive half of the turf. Taken away by Salisbury again. In the attacking circle. Frank has had it for a moment. Then loses it. Strauss near sideline. Keeps it in. Pass forward for Mark. Goes off her foot. Playing the advantage with Jamison. Taken away by Strauss. Junior was just named second team all ODAC, and she has been beyond impactful today. Maybe the best player on the turf, especially on the defensive end so far for Lynchburg. Jeffries takes the contact from a Lynchburg defender. Tries to get it out to Davis on the far end of the turf. Taken away by Gabrielle Purdom. Kaylee True now in front of Purdom. Instead, the pass is cut off. Denopolis looks long. Wanted Jordan Brooks, boat right, there to defend. 
foul on the play. It's going to go against Boatwright. Jeffries tries to cross in front of Mark. Loses it. That's back with the Hornets. Less than 10 and a half to go in the third quarter. It's been high octane so far at the start of the second half. Salisbury down by a score. Looking to find the equalizer. Dangerous ball called on Boatwright. Salisbury as a team. Very good on the road so far this season. And it's tricky. There's a lot of road contests on the slate for Salisbury, especially considering only two conference opponents in a three-team coast-to-coast field hockey division. So in a lot of ways, Salisbury serves as an independent. Shot was deflected. Mark wanted Dudley. Lero got a stick on it. Couldn't maintain possession instead. It's Jeffries in front of two defenders. Boatwright again. Working against Brooks. Once again, the sophomore of the guilty party. Jeffries to start it up. Has Brooks. Started both games in the Coast to Coast tournament. Overall, nine starts this season, including today. Lynchburg comes through with another stop, but asking their defense to do a lot of work. The onset of the second half. Clayball. As her pass deflected back to her. Now able to get it through to Purdom. Wanting Truitt. And instead, Lynchburg concedes possession, and Salisbury has Christine Getz. Begin the opportunity. It was immediately then taken away by Purdom. Two teams exchange possession back and forth. Lynchburg looking for their first ever win against Salisbury. Seagulls 4-0 all time against the Hornets. Those matches coming in 2010, 2014, 2015, and then 2019. Boatwright gets past Brooks. Had a step on Jeffries. Now she tried to cross from right to left. It's a touch too strong and cleared out along the near sideline by Hannah Johnson. But that run for Boatwright, again, does a lot to just shield, uh, shift the field of possession. Excuse me. And now you're seeing Lynchburg able to operate in positive territory, giving their defense an opportunity to catch their breath, taking the workload off the shoulders of Caleb Brady, and instead forcing Salisbury to come up with some defensive stops to stay in it, right? Give up a second goal or give up a first goal of the second half and fall behind by two scores. And the workload grows that much larger for the Seagulls as they look to stay alive. Pass ahead, looking for Lloyd. Off the mark. After the clear from Strauss. Mackenzie Mitchell had it for just a second. Giannis, who has the game winner as of now. Trying to find Truett, who we've seen shifted up the turf today. Normally somebody who's playing on the back line primarily as the right back other end of the turf to Aaron Boatwright but in the second half moving forward up the field Lynchburg trying to find Laro grad student 99 career goals looking for number 100 finished the regular season third in the conference in goals second in assists most shots tied for the most points with 55 overall if Jackie Laro can Find an offensive category. She's top three in it. Reardon keeps it in. Centers it up for Davis. Whistle on the play, and it looks like Caleb Brady was knocked over by a seagull, and that might have been the result of the foul. Yeah. 